Hey everybody, I'm here at the movie theater with the T-Rex from the new Jurassic movie. And there's uh, somebody over there riding another one. It's really cool. Anyways, this is Phil and this is... Kevin. Hey Kevin. And I uh, hope you enjoy service with Pastor Dave and Pastor Diane. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Welcome to Worship at Christ the Servant. We're so honored you have chosen to worship with us in this way today. And look, Pastor Diane's with us again. Last week she was busy doing vacation Bible school, so she couldn't join us. This week she's busy doing Camp Hope, but she's joining us anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's turn up the volume and let's get started. She's on the train, all alone, no one to share the ride. He left me one year ago, sadness she couldn't hide. Her gaze turns toward the sky. A tear forms in her eye. Who was the one who missed? What made it so unclear? When did we come to this? Where can we go? from here Why the heart so scarred Why the depth of shame Why is it so hard to ease the pain Sitting across the table, looking beyond their eyes. Silence is their constant companion, nights full of deep sighs. Grasping for what can heal, but the words all who was the one who missed? What made it so unclear? When did we come to this? Where can we go from here? So scarred, why the depth of shame? Why is it so hard to ease the pain? There is one who repairs soul, one who knows all your pain. There is one who can make you whole until his love remains. Love remains. Love remains, love 
love remains, His love remains. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together. Dear, Dear Father, Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. God hears your prayer and fills you with the power to live today, tomorrow, and every day enjoying new and abundant life. Live in newness of life. Amen? Amen. I love to tell the story of unseen things above of Jesus and His glory of Jesus and His love I love to tell the story because I know it's true it satisfies my longings as nothing else would do I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story how pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet I love to tell the story for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story for those who know it best seem hungry to hear it like the rest and when in scenes of glory I sing the new new song I'll sing the old old story that I have loved so long I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you
Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your son that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Did you know that Shania Twain here in Las Vegas has had to cancel some of her concerts because of vocal cord issues? Oh my, no. And they say she has to have vocal rest. It's very important as we all yeah. know. And then I also know that the Dixie Chicks, I think they're in Europe, they've had to stop a few mm. shows because of vocal cord issues. So it does happen. It's not just me, folks. <laughs> it's other people, too. Well, let's see. We had uh, Vacation Bible School um, a week ago, mm. but we didn't have the movie ready a week ago. We just saw some pictures. So now let's take a look at our Vacation Bible School movie made by Mr. Christian Sovacool. So let's see what it was like.
We have the best staff ever for Vacation Bible School. They, they did wonderful, the adults, all the youth. And again, Mr. Christian, what a great job he did with that video. Well, we just finished up the first week of Camp Hope, which is quite a different experience than Vacation Bible School. It's an all-day camp at the church, and it's fully staffed by our youth. And so uh, we don't have the movie ready yet. It'll be ready next week. So right now, let's just take a look at some of the pictures to see a little bit of what Camp Hope was like. First reading is from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. You shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them using the equipment from the oxen. He boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. Okay, that's quite a story. There's, You're going to give us some backstory to this. As they like to do on a television series in previous episodes, this is what was happening. Uh, Elijah, a great, great prophet for Israel, one of the greatest, and yet he had uh, enraged the king and the queen by condemning their practices of idolatry, and he had a big duel with these other priests who served these other gods. The false prophets. The false prophets, and he won, of course, Elijah won, because God made it work in towards Elijah's favor. However, that upset the queen especially, so now his life was in danger. He had to go on the run. He goes a long ways and he finally comes to a place where he does encounter God and he has a, a great experience of, of meeting God. And I think God does 
minister to him. But in the meantime, he thinks he's all alone. He thinks like, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one of faith who's left. But God reassures him, no, there are others. And then I think this is, in essence, we're up to this point where now God is giving Elijah a plan for the next steps. Okay, Elijah, here's, here's what you're going to do now. And it's kind of setting up who will be Elijah's successor, who will be the next great prophet uh, speaking to God's people, giving God's message and guidance to God's people. Uh, but not just the prophet, he, he's uh, told who to, who's supposed to be in charge of which parts of what kingdom. Uh, but we, we mainly want to talk about Elisha anyway, so we won't worry too much about the, uh, those other things. So he's, he's given this instruction, go out and anoint, which means in essence say he's being chosen, commissioned to be a prophet just as you are a prophet, Elijah. It, I find it is a very, very interesting because there's, there's a bit of a crossover, which we'll get to when we get to the gospel reading. But here is Elijah and he is out with 12 yoke of oxen, 12 ox ahead of him. That must have been some super duper really big plow that they were pulling through the you field. You know, anytime you see a, a photo or a movie of someone yeah. using oxen mm -hmm. to plow somewhere in the world, you usually see them with one mm -hmm. or Maybe two, two at most yeah. is all you need to yeah. plow through the rockiest of soil. So why do you suppose there were 12 in this instance? Well, anytime in the Bible you see mm -hmm. that number 12, uh, in this case, also, it is symbolic of the, the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what pops in your head. Yeah. And, and so this is all showing that Elisha is making the ultimate, um, he's taking the ultimate actions mm -hmm. for the ultimate commitment mm -hmm. in following Elijah and becoming the prophet, is that he takes those 12 oxen yeah. and then he has a barbecue essentially That's right, right. using all of the equipment that he was plowing with. Yeah, his, so he burns that and, you know, has a barbecue cook, with all oxen. of the oxen. Mm -hmm. So now there's nothing left. So he uh, cannot and, turn back in essence. And he kissed his mother and father. Yeah, and so it's yeah. like he has completely separated himself mm -hmm. now from the past. Mm -hmm. And now he is ready to go with Elijah for the future. It's the ultimate commitment mm -hmm. that he is making. And mm -hmm. he's making it right there on the spot. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 there's no doubt. His, his choice, his decision is 100%. He, he's all in, uh, if you think of it in the Las Vegas, Las po Vegas poker terms. Poker terms. Uh, you know, you got your pile of chips in there and you're playing poker and then you push that whole entire pile into the middle and that's it. You know, you're, you're completely committed. And that's, and that's what he was doing. He was absolutely committed to take on the mission, the ministry that God was going to give to Elisha. And as we could know, he does some pretty amazing things too, just like Elijah did. But it's trusting in God and listening to God, and that's what Elisha chooses to do. And making that commitment, mm -hmm. letting go of the past, mm -hmm. and realizing that he's being called into the future with Elijah. We read Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods. Never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because God is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices my body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. 
So I see at the end of this psalm, here's, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a lot going on in this psalm as there are in most psalms. But toward the end of it, I see good um, statements of affirmation, um, self-affirmation, mm -hmm. but things to remind us uh, what God does for us. And it's almost like uh, we should put it in, in a, maybe in a song or something that we can sing over and over. Mm -hmm. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That we need to sing mm -hmm. over and over and over. Our next reading is from Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1 and 13 through 25. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. That's one of my, uh, I love a lot of the letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians. There's uh, several parts of it. They're some of my very favorite, but uh, the first uh, part we heard here, for freedom Christ has set us free. I think that's a, a wonderful portion of a passage if you want to remember a Bible passage for freedom Christ has set us free uh, but at the same time uh, Paul knew he needed to qualify that just just a little bit well he's he's uh, describing what this means what kind of freedom how for, do we for understand freedom, this freedom Christ has set us free and then uh, it, it's like he's he's saying that uh, live in a live in community with mm -hmm. others that you must love one another mm -hmm. uh, become slaves to one another that's being in a community together where you're all living and cooperating you know it doesn't mean you have to live in the same house but it's just that you see yourself yeah. living amongst other people in community and he's defining how that works and mm -hmm. what it means and then I think because some of these people uh, had not been Christian a really long time, he needs to help them understand some of the distinction from the culture that they were used to and what had been valued in the culture, or maybe not necessarily valued, but not particularly looked down upon or is anything wrong about it. And so helping get the understanding, but what does it mean to be led by the Spirit and I tell you, I, I, if you read the list of the works, I, I also like the way he presents it, the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. So which one do you want to choose? And right? when he's talking about the flesh, works of the mm. flesh, that's the way of saying uh, sinful nature. Right, the sinful the, nature. The sinful nature. Not, not just, this is yeah. not, he's not saying this is automatically bad. It's 
I, I self-centered do, sin. I do like the way it is phrased that the works of the flesh are obvious. <laughs> then why do you have to list and all of these ones? Now you just had to name a whole bunch of things. Yeah. But yeah. but he's giving a sampling. Mm -hmm. This isn't the definitive list. Mm -hmm. He's saying, yeah, for example, here are some of these things that break community, mm -hmm. that are sinful, mm -hmm. that prevent us from loving one another. Right. Uh, it, earlier than that, he, you know, he, he does build up to this mm -hmm. list because he does say, um, if you, you bite and devour one mm -hmm. another, and I think that is a, a very good warning for 2022. Because that's what we see happening all around us. Yeah. You need to be careful who you listen to and what you read. Mm -hmm. Because so much of it is wanting you to not live in community, but to actually look for enemies. Mm -hmm. And if you are a person who sees someone of a different political leaning than you, and you see them as your enemy, mm -hmm. you're going the wrong direction and you need to re repent and turn around and get back to going the right direction, which is what we're seeing in this passage here. If you see yourselves in the works of the flesh, turn around and mm -hmm. look for the, the fruits of the Spirit, mm -hmm. being led by the Spirit. But too often, there, it's no longer a case of, I might disagree with you, but I still love you and mm -hmm. we still live in community mm -hmm. together. But instead, that's changed with, I disagree with you. You are wrong and you are evil. And we are no longer in community. And we need to resist that. So every time you feel yourself going down that road, repent, turn around, and get back to being led by the Spirit. And led by the Spirit means the fruits of the Spirit. It sounds so much better, mm -hmm. don't they? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness self-control that is what enables you to live mm -hmm. together Gospel is from Luke chapter 9, verse 51 through 62. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So we, we, uh, we now see where the text about Elijah and Elisha uh, is brought in because of part of this, of what Jesus is talking about. But the first part is an important preparation of the way. Jesus is still going on and ministering to people, preaching, teaching, healing, but we are told he set his face to Jerusalem. And that means he knows that he will be going to Jerusalem to, to face death for our sake and resurrection and ascension. But that is where he knows he has to go to fulfill the mission that God has given him. But he has, has work for the disciples to do. 
And it's an interesting little episode of uh, when they go into this Samaritan village to prepare the way and they don't get a good reception. And they have big plans. Well, the, they didn't get a good reception because the Samaritans and the Jews had a split in the mm -hmm. past. It's almost, it, you know, it's not quite like it, but it's like um, Union soldiers and Confederates. You know, it, it was, uh, there was that split that the Samaritans did not see Jerusalem as a valid place to go to worship. The, the true center of worship, And yes. the Jews, the temple was in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. was the, the center of all that a is holy. Big disagreement. Yeah. And so there was that disagreement. So that's why the Samaritans did not receive him. Mm -hmm. So then the disciples, they are speaking with righteous destruction mm -hmm. and Jesus lets them know that there is no such thing. We still think mm -hmm. that if you're righteous about something you can destroy but Jesus rebukes them mm -hmm. asking shall we call down fire from heaven? Yeah. No. Do you want us to command fire from heaven? About the ultimate destruction. Mm -hmm. Shall we command heaven to destroy those? Talk about sinful nature. Yeah. I feel like as much as they try to present it as if they are doing this for, to defend Jesus, to, to uh, you know, how he had been dishonored and they don't want that to reflect on Jesus. But I think it's really about their own egos being bruised. And I would say, uh, because I'm doing the Book of Acts on the online Bible study and I just happened to do the segment on chapter 8 in Acts and in there they then go out to Samaria to reach out to now bring the message about Jesus and they are welcomed people are happy to have them come and tell about tell them about Jesus um, in his death his resurrection and they be, are seeing him as the Messiah so just so you know, this is a moment in time and that that situation changes a great deal later on after Jesus has died and risen again. I also think that that connection though with, will you follow me? When I call you, will you come and will you follow me? And Jesus is very strong here. He, he in, does. In that moment of time. In this moment, in this time. Living in that moment yeah. of time. Mm -hmm. There are the ones who give excuses. Mm -hmm. And each one of those excuses is essentially not now, not now. Later. later. And even the one, you know, I'd never thought of it this way before, but, but the one who says, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that his father's dead. It could mean could that be a wait tactic. until my father dies. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, how many people delay mm -hmm. living their lives until they wait for someone in the family to die and then they feel free to, mm -hmm. to, to live? And, you know, that may be what it is, saying, Lord, not now. You're calling me to follow you, but how about in a little bit? First, let me go do these other things. Mm -hmm. Let me deal with the past. And Jesus is very firm because it's not something that we delay. It's not something we wait for the right time. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is calling us in that moment of time, saying, follow me. And discipleship is now. It's not someday in the future. Mm -hmm. Not look back. Look to the future where God is leading. Let us pray. Rejoicing in the good news of God come near. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of faithfulness, bless Christians everywhere with courage and compassion to be your church, offering themselves to the world in unity and love. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. God of wisdom, give us eyes to see the earth as an expression of your love and teach us wisdom to live upon it with gentleness, care, and humility. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. God of mercy, we pray for the nations and peoples of the world. Come with the mercy you have promised from of old. Be this world's hope and salvation. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. 
God of compassion, touch the lives of all who suffer. Where there is despair, bring hope. Where there is illness, bring health. Where there is death, bring life everlasting. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. God of love, we pray for those recently married and for all those preparing to join their lives in faithfulness to each other. Uphold them in their vows and teach them gentleness and mercy. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Into your hands, O God of compassion, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your great mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be.
the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Join with us in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. And stay in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And you'll see us here again next week.